Did you really? <laughs> I wonder if they are. Good morning, Life Church. Happy Mother's Day. Come on, let's stand up for you. Let's worship the Lord together, all right? Come on, put your hands together. The sound of heaven stops the peace and wakes my heart. Choose his prayer. 
for this day we're gathered in your name calling out to you you'll go away like a fire away beneath desire burn our hearts with truth you're the reason we're here you're the reason we sing yeah. Open up the heavens We want to see you Open up the floodgates The mighty river Flowing from your heart Feeling every part of our praise Your praise in this place, your glory on our face, we're looking to the sky. Just sitting there like a cloud, we're standing with us now. Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason we hear. You're the reason we see. Yeah. Open up the head.
This morning, it was such a wonderful thing to open up Facebook and Instagram and just see endless posts honoring moms, seeing how much we love them, how much we care and all that. And you know, I thought there would be no greater thing for us to do before we honor our moms than to take a moment and honor our Father. For without Him, we can't breathe, we can't move, we can't do anything. But in Him, we live and move and find our being. So we pour out our praise upon Him this morning. We pour out our love upon the One who gave it all just for us. We pour out our adoration to the One that gave His life so that we could have life. The One who poured out everything so that we could be healed and find hope and find joy. Come on, we got a reason to exalt Him. We got a reason to praise Him. We got a reason to lift Him up. Amen? 
Hallelujah. I praise Him and I thank Him for being so good and being so faithful. Amen. He's been a good God. He has been a good God. Would you agree? Amen. I'm so thankful for Him today. I tell you what, His presence has been so powerful in this place today. First service was so wonderful. I kind of feel like this one's just getting ready to go to a whole new level. And it begins with praise begins with worship and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing y'all sound really good like you mean it today and all the earth come on shout our hearts will these bones will sing the rain. Are you, Lord? Come on, let's lift him up in this place today. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great this morning. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. In your own way before we move on before we transition would you just give him your praise come on in your own way just open your mouth and tell him how good he's been lord we thank you lord we praise you lord we exalt you we thank you you're a good god you're a faithful god we thank you for being so good we thank you for answering we thank you for being with us we thank you god that you are our healer, that you are our peace, you are our strength and our joy. You are everything that we need, God. We lean into you today, Jesus. We lean into you today, oh God. And we praise your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Come on, give God a big hand clap this morning. Come on, make a joyful noise unto the Lord today. Hallelujah. Come on. Hey, hey. Well, greet somebody around you before you're seated this morning. Tell them you're glad they're here today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Becoming Your Mom support group. Uh, we have some visitors with us today. Welcome to you. My name is Mark, and I'm the group leader. And I think we'll start by reciting our mission statement. We love our moms, but we are not our moms. We love our moms, but we are not our moms. Carol, would you mind starting us off this week? Hi, everyone. I'm Carol. Hi, Carol. I am the oldest of three roommates, and I'm turning into my mom. I clean up everything after them. I've even started doing their laundry. I talk to myself in the grocery store all the time. All of my status updates are just pictures of kids. I don't even have kids. Same. Well, kids and recipes. The other day, I almost licked my finger and wiped the face of a total stranger. I keep saying words like garbage and tarjay. 
What is that? I'll send a text to someone just to let them know I sent them an email. Well, how else would they know? Right? I mean, these shoes were on sale. What am I supposed to do? Not buy them? I call my husband my son's name. And sometimes I call my son the dog's name. I always tell people, I'll be like two minutes, then it'll be like an hour. <laughs> whoa, whoa, take it easy there. Shannon already has a tissue. We really don't need to offer her one. I do. Did you see how they let the momness overtake them? So you may not be able to avoid becoming your mom, but the key is to let the beautiful things about moms shine through in your life. The kindness, the caring, the compassion, the qualities that God gave moms when he created them. Oh, like when I text my friends, LOL, lots of love. That's not what LOL means. That's what my son told me it meant. LOL, lots of love. What else, what else would it mean? You know, I used to be an amazing dancer. Now when I dance, people just get embarrassed. Can I show you? Yeah, oh, no, Carol. Carol, oh, sit down. It's not bad. Carol, please. One, two. Come on, let's give all of our moms a big round of applause. We appreciate you, moms. We love you here. Now, some of you have some dance moves like that, and we don't see that. Feel free to incorporate that during the worship experience. Raise your hands, maybe do some dancing, you know, just kind of, you know, spruce up your worship experience a little bit. But uh, we just want to do a couple things before we uh, segue into the next part of the service. And the first thing we want to do is we wanted to introduce uh, officially our newest child into the Live Church family. This is Tatum Elise Smith. Guys, you can go ahead and get a, get a close-up of that. There you go. Uh, now, I, I am a little biased. I know every parent thinks that their child is the cutest, but I mean, look at that. I mean, is that not just a bundle of, of cuteness right there? I mean, you can't contain yourself. You just want to stare at her all the time. I mean, we could just sit here the rest of the service and just look at her and go away. And you should just feel full and joyful, amen? Uh, but no, Ted did a great job. Thanks for being such a great mom to our moms on a, on a happy Mother's Day. Thank you. I love you. Uh, we do uh, something really significant here at Life Church. It's a tradition of ours. And uh, if you are a mom or you are an expecting mother, would you please stand and remain standing for the next couple of minutes? What we'd like to do every year is we have a special guest that will come forward. Um, and we're going to welcome Brittany and Orlando Galvin, our kids, pastors, and life kids. Go ahead and come forward. And what they're going to do is they've got some flowers that we would like to give uh, on behalf of Life Church to all the mothers and expecting mothers. So if you would, please remain standing uh, until you receive a flower so that every mother can get one. And then once you get one, you may be seated. I believe we have kids that are looking for their own mothers. So please give them time if they are passing you by. I think they're looking for their mother first. One more time, let's give all of our moms and our Life Kids Department a huge round of applause. We love you, moms. You have a blessed day. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. I want to make sure we did not miss a single mom. Every mom get a flower? Okay, moms, now that you have your flower, would you stand one more time? Amen. 
wow. We had a lot of mothers in first service, but nothing like this. This is unreal. I want to take just a moment and just look at all these beautiful moms. I want to tell you something. You bring beauty, grace, joy, and love into this world. Did you know that? Yeah, give them a hand. Yeah, give them a hand. I don't know if you realize it or not, but you are a very special vessel. When God schemed a plan to have this earth reproduce and continue from generation to generation, He made a mom made you so whether you realize it or not you are very very special not only to your family but you are very special to our life church family I told first service and I really mean this when I said you bring beauty you do can you imagine if life church was nothing but just grumpy old men <laughs> yeah but you bring a beauty to our service every time because of who you are. So, Father, we want to thank you for just a moment for blessing our life and for blessing Life Church, for giving to us such a special creature, moms, whose hearts are filled with love to the capacity that the only other heart that could love more is God himself. In her hands are kindness when she reaches to touch us. She fills our life with goodness. She teaches her children the ways of God and the ways of life. And the Bible says that her children rise up and call her blessed. So, Father, we just thank you for all of these moms today. And we ask that today would be a special day for them. And that you would bless them beyond compare today as they spend time with their family and loved ones. May they be recognized as to who they really are, the special person in all of our lives and we thank you for them today in your name we ask it and everybody say it amen let's give them one more great big hand today moms happy mother's day from life church we appreciate you so very very much amen our rushes are coming we're going to wait up on you for our sunday morning tithes and offering and give you an opportunity to give today you give and i know god's going to bless you if you're giving towards the tithe challenge, make sure you mark on your check or on the envelope TC for tithe challenge. If you're giving towards your, your pledge, make sure that you put a P on that or pledge challenge so we'll know where to, to take this money and deposit it in the correct areas to cover these situations. And I wanted just to, real quickly, while I've got your attention, ladies, in particular, tomorrow night's Ladies of Life, please do not forget we have the First Lady of Mount Triumph Baptist Church. Lois Washington is going to be your speaker. She will do a tremendous job. So if you have not signed up, please, out in the foyer, there's two separate sign-up areas. Make sure you sign up so we'll know how much food and babysitters to have to cover this. So, so make sure you do that. And then men, our golf tournaments next Sunday for our four-man scramble. Sign up for that as well. Get those things out of the way real quick. All right, Father, thank you for this opportunity we have to be in your house for the blessings that you give and send our way. And as we pause today to give back to you, I just ask that you would take our gifts, our gifts of love from a cheerful heart, we give to you today because of all that you have done for us. 
So receive our gift, and we ask it in your name. Amen. May 20th, we are going to be honoring our seniors during the 11 a.m. service. If your senior would like to be a part, they can sign up at the Info Center. What up, Live Church? I want you to join with me on May 30th at 7 p.m. at the Jeff Lee Pool for a fun family night event with our church community. The car guy will be providing food for $5 a plate. Also, water baptisms are happening. If you want to make that happen, go please sign up at the Info Center and hope to see you there. June 4th through the 7th, we'll be hosting our annual Life Church Internship for 7th through 12th graders. Students will be working hand in hand with our staff, doing day in and day out activities that we do here at the church, as well as doing personal coaching and classes that are designated for them. If you'd like to be a part, you can grab an event packet from the Info Center. <laughs> Camp Life is June 18th through the 21st. The cost is $165, and you can register by grabbing an event packet from the Info Center. Lays of Life will be May 14th at 6 p.m. We'll have free food and child care provided. If you'd like more information or to register, please visit our Info Center. May 25th from 6 to 9 p.m., Life Church will be hosting a first aid seminar and certification class for first responders. They have extended an invitation to any concealed carry individuals to attend this class free of charge. They will be covering items ranging from hypothermia to gunshot wounds. If you would like to attend, please show up here before 6 p.m. Well, good morning, everybody. It is good to see you all. I'm so glad you are here. We're going to have a great time in the Word. Hey, if you don't have anything extra to do and you took notes on all those announcements, tonight yours truly gets to speak at the McAllister Baccalaureate. That is downtown at S. Sarge at 7 p.m. So if you want to go to Sunday night church, come on. I get to preach. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a good time. So, uh, you know, we'll have to bring some hoop to baccalaureate. Anyway, come join us. Would you stand on your feet? We're going to declare our life confession as we get into the Word. Prepares our heart and our mind to receive. So let's declare it out loud with boldness like we believe it, like we're ready for it. It's on the screen. Here we go. The life I live is not my own. It is anchored in Christ Jesus who loves me. I choose to accept Him whose love accepts me, heals me, and changes me so I can love others. I am alive and so is God. God's Word. I open my eyes to see, my ears to hear, and my heart to receive. Come on, today is a good day. This is my life confession. Come on, give God a big hand clap. Now, before you sit down, look at two or three people around you and just tell them, you better get ready. You just better, you just better get ready. You just better... Get ready. <clears throat> well, last Sunday morning, we kicked off a brand new series entitled The Heart Series. We hit on a topic called the hijacked heart. We talked about how sometimes in life we go through situations and we go through circumstances that end up hijacking our heart and end up owning our heart and we find ourselves in need of a renewal and refreshing back into our commitment to Christ. You know, the Bible tells us very clearly in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23, it says, guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. So the heart is very important. It's very important to guard. It's very important to strategically keep safe because what we allow into our heart will end up determining a lot of the decisions we make and the courses we take in life. We're reminded in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 16. It says, be careful. Don't let your heart be deceived so that you turn away from the Lord. You know, we got to be careful. 
There are things out there set up by our enemy, the devil, longing to pull us away from a life filled with God. He has a plan. He has a purpose, the enemy does. And he wants to pull us away from God. But Jesus said, I've come that you may have life, that you may have it to the full, that you may have it till it overflows in your life. And so today, you can have that overflowing life, but it begins with guarding your heart. As we take this series a step further, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever had doubts in your life? Doubts that God had heard your prayer? Doubts that He was taking care of the situation? I mean, you were praying about it, you were trusting for it, but yet somewhere along the way you had some concerns, you had some doubts, some hiccups in life that have caused you to maybe feel questions, uncertainties about something you're going through. You feel like you've been given a promise from God, like you heard a word from Him that He's going to take care of this thing and He's going to provide or be there, but yet your situation doesn't quite add up to the promise. What you're going through doesn't exactly look like what God said you're going to have. Has anybody ever been there? And so, Today, I want to talk to you from the thought of the doubting heart. The doubting heart. And if you have your Bible, I want you to turn with me to Luke chapter 1. Then we're going to read a story that's pretty popular. You've probably heard it before. And it's actually a very significant story because without the person in this story, a lot would have changed in this thing called Christianity and the life we live. But look at Luke chapter 1, beginning at verse 26. I'm going to read to you today from the NIV. And this is what the Bible says. It says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. And you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Isn't that cool? Verse 34, here's Mary. And maybe you might would have said the same thing. How <laughs> will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. No word from God will ever fail fail. I'm just going to go ahead and say that again because y'all aren't getting it yet. I'm here to tell you no word that comes from God Almighty will ever fail you. Amen. Never. So Mary responds with, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Don't you know Mary had some serious doubts going on in her head. <laughs> Here she is just living her life. Everything seems to be going good. She's engaged. She's entering into a new phase of life. Out of nowhere, God shows up through an angel and says, Hey, you've been chosen to carry the Son of God. How? How is this going to happen? How is this going to take place? Don't you know she had some doubts concerning what the Lord was saying to her? But what do you do when your current reality contradicts the promise you've been given? 
What is it that you do when God has told you something is going to happen and something's going to transpire, but everything around you is not adding up to that taking place? Your current situation, your current status does not approve of what God has said is going to take place. It does not look like what God has said is going to take place. Don't you know, Mary said, hey, angel, don't you know my current situation, my current status is that I have never been with anybody, never been with a man. How in the world am I going to conceive the Son of God? How is this going to happen? How is this going to take place? How can this be? I mean, don't you know? And just like Mary, maybe you've been there. You and I come into services just like this. We hear the Word of God. We take notes. We leave this place encouraged because we felt His presence and we go out into our lives and we go out into our workplace and we go out and we live and we let God guide us, but yet we still have some doubts that are wrapped up in one word of how. How's this going to happen? How's God going to supply this need? How's this ever going to change? How are things ever going to get better? Maybe you've said some things like, you know, I'm struggling here, God. I'm struggling with the weakness and I keep falling into its trap. Yet you tell me I'm more than a conqueror. How am I more than a conqueror? Maybe there are others of you here today that are saying, my marriage is on the rocks. I thought God brought us together and I thought God told me we were going to make it, that we were going to be better than ever. How is this marriage going to get better? You promised me, God, that I will raise a family, yet I'm still single. How is this going to happen? You placed a dream in my heart to start a business and all the doors are slamming shut in my face. How is this going to take place. My kids, they're running from God, yet I dedicated them to you, O oh Lord, and you said to train them up, and they'll know which way to go, and when they're older, they won't depart, but they're living like heck right now. How are they ever going to get back on track? How am I going to get through this divorce? How am I going to overcome this addiction? How am I ever going to trust again? How am I going to live when the doctors have told me it's impossible, and then I'm not going to? How am I going to be successful when everyone else has told me I can't do it, that I'm not qualified? How? And just like Mary, we all usually look at our current status and believe it determines our future outcome. But our reality does not alter God's ability. What is reality in your life does not alter God's ability. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, whatever you're being challenged with right now, present day, does not alter God's ability. He is still on the throne. He is still in control. He is the one that spoke and it came into being. He's the one that said, let there be an earth and the earth begin to spin and rotate around the sun. He's the one that spoke and knit you together in your mother's womb and said you were fearfully and wonderfully made. He's the one that does it. In Him, we live, move, and have our being. If He's the one, then nothing we face in this life can ever alter His ability. And it does not surprise Him. What you see may not be adding up, but remember, God's ways are higher than your ways. And God's thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And God's perspective is different than what you can see right now. God sent His Word to Mary, and He said to her, you will conceive the Son of God. He did not say you might, but He said you will. And she did. She said, the, the angel said to her, He will be the Son of God, not He might be the Son of God. Why? Because the Word of God is powerful. When God speaks a word, there's nothing that can change it, nothing that can alter it. God's Word is secure. God's Word is firm. And at last, Luke 1, the angel said, No word from God will ever fail. That's wonderful. Isaiah 40 verse 8 says, The grass withers and the wild flowers fade, but our God's Word stands firm and forever. 
So no matter what you face and no matter what season you go through and no matter what comes in the mail and no matter what the doctor tells you and no matter what the the counselor says, no matter what your paycheck looks like, I'm here to tell you God's word will not fail. And when you place your trust in him and you build your life upon him, the world will send you some questions that will cause your heart to doubt. But when you have God in the middle of all those questions and doubts, he will help you last and stand firm. Amen? Come on, give him a hand for that. This morning, someone needs to be reminded that even though things may look wrong and are not working out like you thought, it's in the middle of your present day mess that God works his plan into existence. God has a word for every doubt that hits your heart. God's word inside this book is an answer for every doubt you face, everything that you question, everything that's not adding up. There's an answer for it. Let's go th- let's let's talk about a few of them this morning. There's a word for sickness today. Psalms 107 verse 20 says, "He sent out his word and he healed them." Well, who's the Word? John 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's good right there. Yeah. John 1 14 says, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This Son they're talking about is the fulfillment of the promise that was given to Mary. And if Mary had not said yes, we might not have the ability to quote this Word today. But even in her doubt, she said, Yes, Lord, I'll do what you tell me to do. And I'll go where you tell me to go. Let your word become life to me. And God became flesh and sent his word to dwell among you and I. So that we can come to him just as we are. Sick and all. And watch him heal our bodies. And maybe, just maybe, you're sitting in this auditorium or watching in a hospital room today. And you're not feeling well. And the doctor said you're not well. And your family may know or your family may not know. But there is is a word for that doubt and the word is that God is still a healer if he did it then he can do it now and I'm telling you his healing is here come on give him some praise today he is a healer amen there's a word for pain and depression not just talking about physical pain there's an emotional pain that goes on sometimes There's a a pain that goes on in the mind. Never has there been a day that I see so much pain and depression going on in our city. It bothers me as a pastor when I wake up in the morning and in the middle of the night have received a text from our student pastor who has said, tonight I received two texts, 30 minutes apart, two different students saying they're contemplating suicide. That's a signal of pain. And so much of that is running rampant today. We're talking one of those students is in junior high and one of those students is in high school. So much life ahead of them, but yet the enemy has convinced them that there's no reason to keep on living. I'm a firm believer that the devil is moving in that realm today to take out the next generation because he knows this generation, you and I, are getting a little bit old. And if he can take them out and we're just going to go in the sweet by and by... Who's going to be here to tell people the message? (laughs) But you and I have got to begin to show people that there is a word for that depressed feeling. There is a word when suicide starts running through your mind. When you feel hopeless, when you feel like you're not going to make it, when you feel like everybody's turned against you, when you feel like God is not answering you, when you feel like nothing is ever going to turn around, I'm here to tell you God is still working. He sent a word for that depression. He sent a word for that spirit of suicide. Look at Isaiah 53 verse 4 through 5. It says, surely he, Jesus, took up our pain and he bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But Jesus was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brings us peace. Everybody say peace. Was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. When Jesus was on the cross, suspended between heaven and earth, every single pain in your life 
was on his body. Every single doubt of pain and suffering, every single depressed feeling, every single day that drug you down and made you feel like you were all alone, he took it on his body on the cross. And let me tell you something, one drop of his precious blood was enough. But Jesus gave it all. He poured out his life's blood so that you could live a real, abundant, prosperous, good, joy-filled, pain-free life. And when you are dealing with pain and when you are dealing with depression, I'm here to tell you, remember the preacher said, Jesus took this pain. Jesus took this depression. And because he took it, he provided you a way to have healing and have hope and have a reason to keep on living. Come on, give God some praise for it today. Psalm 30 verse 11 says, You have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. Some of you have been mourning for a long time. There is a season for mourning. When we experience a loss, we mourn. Some of you have experienced a loss, and it's brought you mourning. It may not be the death of a loved one. It may be the death of a relationship. It may be the death of a friendship, and you're mourning this thing. You may be mourning something that you've done, and you look back over your life, and you're so disappointed in yourself, and you're so disappointed that you made those decisions that caused your family so much pain. But God has sent me here this morning to tell you the word came to say, I'm here to take away the clothes of mourning and put back on you the clothes of joy. You have been sad long enough. It is time for smiles to come across your face. It is time for laughter to come out of your voice. It is time for you to pick yourself up. Why? Because Nehemiah tells us the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you're feeling weak, it's time to laugh. It's time to take off the morning clothes and step into some joy. Doesn't this community need some joy? Let it begin in you. Let it begin in your life. Let it begin right here and today and right now. Amen? Amen. There's a word for this stuff. There's a word for sin. Sin is real. We've all fallen into it. We've all messed up. Nobody wants to say amen. (laughs) I'll let my neighbor say it first. Psalm 103 verse 10 and 12 says, God does not punish us. For all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. How many of you are thankful for that line right there? I'm so thankful my God is not going to punish me for the things I've done wrong. He doesn't deal with me as I deserve. Then he goes on to say, For his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far as the east is from the west. So when you come to Jesus, you come under the blood. And when you come under the blood, there's no devil in hell that can pull you away from the freedom that Jesus has given you. You are covered. Your sins are forgiven. They are forgotten. And and, and all this condemnation the enemy wants to put on you is just his attempt to try to distract you and cause you to have doubts in your heart. Well, I prayed, but did God really forgive me? Well, I prayed, but did God really forgive me because I messed up royally, Pastor Taryn? Well, here's a good way to know. The Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are in Christ Jesus, and He does not condemn you because now God sees His Son standing in between you and your sins, and He says, all is forgiven. But when you're out from under Christ Jesus and you're away from Christ Jesus, all the condemnation and the guilty verdict is upon you. I don't want to pay that price. How about you? I couldn't pay that price. I could never do enough. I could never say enough. I could never pray enough on my own terms to get my freedom from my sins. I could never do it. But when I come to Jesus and I say, Jesus, forgive me. Wash me clean under your blood. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit in me. It is done like that. My sins are removed off of my account and I am covered. Covered from the top of my head down to my toes. And wherever I go, I am covered by God. There's a word for sin today. Amen? There's also a word for addiction. Our community struggles with addiction. It's everywhere. You can look at it. You can see it walking down the streets. You can see it in homes. You can see it in schools. It's everywhere. 
2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 through 10, Paul said it this way. He said, three different times I begged the Lord, take it away. But each time he said, my grace is all you need. For my power works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in weaknesses, in insults, hardships, persecutions, troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This morning, I want to bring down the wall that makes you think you've got to have your life together in order for God to move in your life. God is not shocked by your weakness. God is not mad at you because you have a struggle. God is not disappointed in you because you have a struggle with an addiction. God just wants you to trust Him with it. Because see, when you're weak, that's when He's strong. If you could handle it on your own, God would let you handle it on your own. God will always let you do what you can do. But what you can't do is when he gets excited. Because what you can't do is where he can go on display with his power and do for you what you couldn't do for yourself. That's good right there. Amen? Oh, but pastor, I don't deserve it. Who does? But yet God loves us enough to put His power in us so that when we are weak, when we are tempted, when it comes across our path and our flesh says, give back in, He's the one inside of you saying, come on, you got better than this. Take a step away and back into my grace and I'll give you enough power to overcome it next time. You don't have to worry about ten times down the road. Just say no today. And when you say no today, it'll be easier to say no tomorrow. Why? Because it wasn't the power, it wasn't you doing it yourself. It was God's power on display inside of you he sent a word he sent a promise for you in that struggle with addiction amen john chapter 8 32 jesus said you will know the truth and the truth will set you free wow if you're already free you don't need freedom it's the bound that need freedom so bound people can know jesus Amen. If not, none of us are saved. Go ahead and look at your neighbor and tell him, you sinner. (laughs) We're all sinners saved by grace. We've all sinned and fallen short of God's glorious standard. Amen. We're all in need of him this morning. There's a word for the broken. Have you ever been broken by life? Has your heart ever been broken? Has it ever been shattered? Someone gave you a promise and they took back that promise. But look at Isaiah 58 verse 12. It says, you will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets and dwellings. Mm. That scripture got me excited. Because I thought, how many broken people I see week in and week out in our town. How many broken people do you work with? How many broken people do you see in your neighborhood that are dealing with struggles? Who is the repairer? The repairer is God Almighty. Is God Almighty on the inside of us? Then that must mean we're the repairer of broken walls. We're the repairer of broken streets. We can bring home. We can bring hope to a city that seems hopeless. We can bring joy back to a city that's full of sadness and gloom. Why? Because we have the Word. And the Word was sent to bring us hope for brokenness. And if you're broken this morning, if your home is broken today, if your mind is broken today, if your heart is broken today, there is an answer. And His name is Jesus. And He'll get in the middle of your brokenness and he'll start putting you together better than you ever were before there's a word for fear have you ever had fear have you ever struggled with fear Isaiah 58 verse 12 that was the one I just read moving on St. Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power of love and a sound mind When your mind is going crazy with fear and you're having trouble sleeping at night because your mind is not sound, just remember where fear came from. It did not come from God. (laughs) So if it didn't come from Him, who did it come from? Our enemy. The enemy wants you so bound up in fear that you have doubts about everything. Doubts about God's promise, doubts about His truth, doubts that He's going to show up, doubts that He's going to take care of you. If the enemy can keep us bound up to doubts, He can keep us from living the life Jesus called us to live. 
But I've been sent here this morning to stand on this stage and declare at the top of my lungs, you do not have to live one more day bound to fear. God has not given you that fear, but he's given you power. He has given you his love, and he has given you a mind that can be sound. You can make good decisions. You can make confident decisions. Why? Because your mind is resting in the Lord. There's a word for it today. God sent forth his word for that doubt, for that fear. When your heart doubts, remember this. Remember who is with you. Remember who's got your back. Remember who's standing by your side. And you don't need to look around in this room because human beings will fail you. But God will not. He'll always be right there with you. Look what happened to Mary. Luke 1, 34 through 35. She said, how will this be? I have my doubts, Mr. Angel. I don't see how this is going to work. For I'm a virgin, she said. And the angel answered her, this is how it's going to work. And this is how it works for you and for me. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Everybody say overshadow. There's something significant about the overshadowing. Because when the Lord overshadows us, what He's doing is, is He's outshining what was dark. He's over and surpassing the doubt. He's exceeding what is coming against us. He is superior to anything the enemy could ever try to create. So the next time doubt creeps into your heart and into your mind, remember what the psalmist said in Psalm 23, verse 4. He said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for how can there be a shadow in the valley except that there be a light standing right beside you you got to have a light before there can be a shadow and the light is God I'm sure preaching better than some of you are responding today Psalm 61 verse 2 says, From the end of the earth I call to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, we all experience an overwhelmed heart at times. When my heart is overwhelmed and weak, lead me, O God, to the rock that is higher than I. A rock that is too high to be reached without you. 1 John chapter 4 verse 4, look at this scripture. It says, You belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory. I love that. And it says, because the Spirit who lives in you is greater than the Spirit that lives in this world. If you are God's child and doubt is creeping up on you, just begin to declare, the greater one is in me. And if He is in me, He's going to see me through this doubt. If He is in me, He's going to heal me from this sickness. If He is in me, He's going to free me from this weakness. Why? Because He's greater than anything the devil can put on me. Yeah. Ephesians 3.20 says, All glory to God who is able. Everybody say, He's able. Through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. God is able. But will we trust even when we have doubts? Because we all will have them. But will we trust Him? We're told in Luke 1, 37 through 38, what did Mary say? I'm so glad she didn't say, how's this going to work? No, not today, angel. I'm not doing it. She didn't say that. She said, the word of God, as she's told by the angel, will never fail. So Mary responded, okay, I'm the Lord's servant. May every word you've spoken become true. That's pretty bold, isn't it? She's like, if you're an angel and God is God, and if his word doesn't fail, then bring it on. Let's do this. <laughs> Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. That's where we get in trouble. That's where I get in trouble. You see, there are some things in my life that God has promised me that aren't reality yet. And i got to trust him. We started this church nearly 16 years ago. 16 years ago, God laid upon my heart a number. He said, Taryn, 10% of the unchurched population. I was like, okay. So I started doing the math, and I'm not good at math, but I got a piece of paper out and a pencil and a calculator. <laughs> and I figured up, okay, so our population is 20,000 people around that amount. 20,000 people. 
the statistics tell us 20% of McAllister goes to church. That's low. So 20% of 20,000 would be 4,000 people are sitting in church today. Only 4,000 of our community. If that was a business in town and they were only getting 20% of the community's help in their business, the business would shut down. But that also means 16,000 people are not going anywhere. So Life Church doesn't need to reach people at another church. <laughs> Life Church just needs to reach people that aren't going anywhere. That don't think they need church. So if God's called us to reach 10% of the unchurched population, that would mean 1,600 people would be coming to Life Church. We don't have 1,600 people coming here. Well, pastor, you just believe. Well, I do believe it, but it's kind of hard when y'all don't show up next week. And I'm sitting here looking at some empty chairs thinking, oh my gosh, God, you told me, and I'm having my doubts today. So I leave church with my doubts. I lay down and take my preacher nap on Sunday afternoon with my doubts. I wake up on Monday morning still with my doubts. I come to staff meeting with my doubts, and I think somebody else could pastor this church well. And I don't need you to encourage me this week and say, oh, pastor, please don't quit. Because I'm here to tell you, every pastor in America wants to quit every single Monday. So I have my doubts, but then God said, you know what? You just got to keep going. Just remain consistent. Keep working. Keep plowing. Keep sowing seed. Because if God has given you a promise, he has said even in his doubts, he will be the provider. And so I'm waiting because you know what? I believe we'll see the day that Life Church has 10% of the unchurched population coming to its church. And then at that point, I just kind of think God isn't going to say, okay, Life Church, you're done. Let's just float into eternity. I think he's going to say, well, let's go for 20%. Let's get some more folks. Why? Because never ever will the word of God need to stop until Jesus returns. And forever will his word have to go forth until he returns. So if we reach 1,600, if we reach 3,200, we're going to declare the truth of God because there is a word for our city and the word is powerful and it helps us in our doubts. Amen? Come on, give God a big hand clap this morning. I close with this word right here. Matthew 19, 26. Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible, including your thing with God. Bow your heads with me this morning. If you're sitting here today and you got doubts in your heart, doubts that I've spoken about, doubts that I have not, you may have a doubt going on in your life about your family, about your marriage, about your health, about an addiction struggle. You may have a doubt going on about your faith. You may have a doubt going on about something that we don't even know about, something to do with your job, something to do in your life. You may be dealing with doubts today. The Holy Spirit sent me here to tell you He knows your doubts and He just longs for you to just bring Him that doubt so that He can place His hand upon your heart and touch you and encourage you. And y'all know what I'm going to do next. So you might as well get ready to respond. If you got doubts in your heart, I'm not going to have you come forward. Gotcha. I'm just going to have you stand. If you're struggling with a doubt, I want you to stand. Come on. Numerous people stood in first service. People are already standing in this service. If you're struggling with a doubt, stand. If you're struggling with fear, stand. If you're struggling in your marriage, stand. If you're struggling in your health, stand. If you're struggling in your finances, stand. If you're struggling with not knowing where God is going to show up, your current status does not look right. But God gave you a promise. When is it going to work out? When is freedom going to come? When am I going to be happy? When is this depression going to go? When is joy going to come? When is mourning going to leave? Come on. Just stand. Just stand. Just stand. Healing comes. Joy comes. But you got to stand. you got to be willing to say like Mary did. If the word of God is not going to fail, may every promise come true in my life. Come on. Come on. 
there's a heaviness over someone today. It's weighing you down. You walk with your head down, facing the ground more than you ever do looking up. I don't know who that's for, but the Holy Spirit wants you to know it's time for you to look up. The days of looking down are over. Look up. Redemption is here. Look up. Your joy is in the house. Look up. He's going to trade that sorrow for happiness, right? I'm telling you right now, it is here. God wants to give someone joy, but you're going to have to stand up to receive it. To say, God, I'm in need of it. I'm waiting. Just stand. I'm waiting. Just stand. Pastor, this seems really weird. Just stand. I'm telling you, right now, you feel it inside of you. It's like something is just turning in you. Just stand. That's all you got to do. I'm going to wait a few more seconds for you. Do not miss this moment. Do not miss this moment. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Stand. Stand. Holy Spirit, move. If you're standing, heads are still bowed, eyes are still closed, no one's looking at you. I want you to put your hands out in front of you just in a receptive mode like you're receiving a gift. Just say, God, here's my heart. I give it to you. I give this to you right now. I receive. Come on, just receive it. Say, I receive. Take my doubts. Here they are. I receive the confidence I've been waiting on, the joy I've been needing, the healing I've been waiting on. From the top of your head down to the soles of your feet, by His stripes, you are healed. Every internal organ made whole, every clogged artery cleaned out, every heart condition made whole. Right now in the name of Jesus, every broken home, right now I speak to that marriage and I tell communication to open up between husbands and wives like it never has been before. I pray for happy homes. I pray for joy over depression. Right now, spirit of suicide, you are defeated under the blood of God Almighty. You shall live and not die. I declare over you joy unspeakable and full of glory coming into your life. I'm broken, Pastor. Right now, he's putting his arms around you. He's putting the pieces back together. He's with you. He's with you. He's with you. Come on, feel him. He's right there. Let him put his arms around you. He's with you. You're not alone. Now, church, open your eyes. If someone's standing around you, I want you to go to them and put a hand on their shoulder right now. Come on. Come on, move. Don't leave. This service isn't dismissed yet. Come on, move. Get to them right now. Puts your hand on their shoulder right now. Come on. Come on, encourage them. Everybody stand. Come on, everybody stand. Nobody stand alone. Hand on a shoulder. We're going to worship together as we do before we're dismissed. I want you just to love on Jesus. Then we'll be dismissed together because he's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. Thank you, Jesus.
Maybe you couldn't sing that song because it's not well with your soul. If you don't have Jesus in your heart, he simply just asked you to invite him. 
And if you need him in your life, just simply pray this prayer with me right now. Say, Jesus, I believe in you, that you are the Son of God, that you died and rose again, and I invite you into my life, into my heart. Remove every doubt and help me believe from this moment on, in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give God some praise in this house today. Amen. I want you to have the blessed of afternoons. Mothers, we love you and we honor you today. God bless you guys. Have a good week.